Hey, I'm Jensen with GIT. M. Recaps. Yomiyama North Middle School. A normal school one would say. Especially for those who had no relationship with a special class. This class is class 3. Who loses their life? Who takes their life? Are they ghosts? The terrifying thing was he never knew what he was getting himself into when he started talking to her. This is another. A 2012 horror and mystery anime series with an insane plot twist. Spoilers ahead. Watch out. And take care. Sakakibara Koichi is a young boy who moved to the rural part of the city to live with his grandparents. He is a transfer student about to enter 9th grade class 3 of Yomiyama Middle School. Few days before he resumes class, his new classmates, Kazami, Sakuraji and Akazawa, come to greet him in the hospital. Turns out our protagonist has a pneumothorax, a life-threatening lung condition. On his way home, he runs into a quiet and mysterious girl called Misaki Mei from his class. She had an eye patch and held a weird-looking doll. His first day of school was nice and warm. Everyone from the class welcomed him as a new friend and got to know him better. However, Akazawa was not present on his first day of school and he approached the mysterious girl from the elevator the second time to strike up a conversation. May tells him he shouldn't try to get close to her. She told him his name was associated with a certain death and even their class was closer to death than anything. Sakaki Bara immediately becomes frightened as Misaki walks away and tells him to never talk to her again for his safety. The next day in school Sakaki realizes Misaki didn't join them in art class and when he saw her alone in the library his classmates tried to stop him from talking to her. Being too suspicious of the frightening atmosphere in the class, Sakaki returns to his hospital to inquire from his nurse, Sanai, if there were any deaths during his stay there. After school, he secretly tales made back to a puppet museum. An old woman welcomes him and tells him to look around. Sakaki goes downstairs where various dolls with missing limbs are kept inside display glasses. He sees a look-alike doll of May. Suddenly, May emerges from the darkness and questions why he followed her. He lied he got lost. As they converse, she decides to reveal what lay under her eye patch, which was an artificial eye made from a doll. May takes him upstairs to reveal the secret of the town after realizing he had no idea what he had caused whatsoever and nobody had told him anything yet. 26 years ago, a student from class 3 of Yomiyama North Middle School was intelligent, good at sports, and generally loved by her fellow classmates. When her student tragically died, her classmates refused to accept that she had passed away. They continued to pretend like she was alive. Even the teachers and the headmaster even up till their graduation. They even provided a seat especially for her. May reveals the girl who died was called Misaki. She also added there was more to the story. Automatically Sakaki was overcome with fear hearing the girl had the same surname as May. The next day, he tried to get information from his classmates about the rumors of class 3 from 26 years ago, but they warned him not to ever mention the name Misaki again. When he sees May from the rooftop and goes to meet her, Teshigawara, another of his classmates, yells over the phone that he should avoid things that don't exist. After their exams, he goes to meet May outside because he was growing suspicious of the fearful atmosphere in the class. May enigmatically claims she is something that doesn't exist, and can apparently only be seen by him. At the same time, Sakuruji receives bad news about her mother and rushes out of the classroom. Shocked upon seeing May and Sakaki, she trips down the stairs, her umbrella lands pointing up and impales her throat. A week after following Sakuruji's death, Sakaki becomes certainly petrified. He has lunch with Sanai to ask what she thought about class 3 from 26 years ago but Sanai doesn't know anything about the rumors, although she promised to do some digging. Afterward, he encounters another classmate named Ayano, whom he manages to save when they are nearly crushed by a falling sheet of glass. Ayano promptly breaks down in tears and screams that she doesn't want to die. Sakiki goes back to the puppet museum to see Mei but she refuses to tell him the rest of the story before strictly warning him not to go to school the next day. The next day in class, everyone is talking about the rumors of the 9th grade's class 3 and Sakuruji's death. They think it might be real or Sakuruji's death might be a coincidence. Either way, Akazawa blames Sakuraji's death on herself for not being present on Sakaki's first day of school to warn him. Now things have become more complicated. During the break, Sanai contacts Sakaki in school that day over whether May actually exists or not. However, the elevator she is riding falls down the shaft and crushes her. Another uprise of fear terrorizes the students again. A few days later, Sakaki is interrogated by the police regarding Sanai's death. On his way back from school, Mochizuki and Takabayashi escort him, 
Sakaki asks for answers, and Takabayashi agrees to tell him everything he knows. However, before he could, Takabayashi had a heart attack resulting in his death. His friends, his teacher, no one spoke to him. After school, he visits Mei to tell her Takabayashi has passed away, and now he was treated like a ghost just like her. Mei takes him upstairs and explains the curse of Class 3. Following the fact that Class 3 of 26 years ago refused to let go of Masaki who died, the class is now a place that invites the dead. In the preceding years, the dead started to join the class and drew Class 3 closer to death. Since nobody associated with them, they began to get closer and spend more time together. Until one day, their class teacher, for the sake of securing their future, took away his own life in front of them. With another death, the student realized that making another person non-existent was pointless. So Akazawa, head of countermeasures, dissolved their punishment. Later, Mei and Sakaki go to their librarian, Mr. Chibiki who was the homeroom teacher for class 3 for 26 years. They wanted to know how to stop the calamity. Mr. Shibiki tells them about a certain year when the killing stopped mid-year. This happened shortly after the class of that year went to visit a shrine in the mountains. However, they never knew what happened that stopped the calamity and even in the years after, the coming class would attend the shrine but the calamity never stopped. Their class teacher announces they would be going on a class trip to the mountains. Mochizuki, Teshigawara, Akazawa and Sakaki get information from Mochizuki's sister on a man named Matsunaga who was a member of class 3 15 years ago and stopped the calamity for that year. At home, Sakaki tries to get information from his aunt Reiko who was in the same class as Matsunaga but she couldn't recall anything. Some of the class decided to go on a trip outside of town to meet with Matsunaga in a hotel. During their stay, they decided to head to the beach to have fun. When Matsunaga joins them, he apologizes for being unable to remember what he did to stop the calamity. A classmate rushed into the water to retrieve a ball but was crushed by the propeller of a moving boat. This horrendous sight makes Matsunaga remember he left it in the classroom for the future generations of class 3. It means whatever he did to stop the calamity back then but didn't know what it was. A few days after the tragic death, Sakaki, Teshigawara, Mochizuki, and may secretly go to look for whatever Matsunaga left as a way to stop the calamity. They found a tape, containing what happened during Matsunaga's class 3 trip to the mountains 15 years ago, recorded by Matsunaga himself. Teshigawara unintentionally rough-handled the tape before they could hear how Matsunaga stopped the calamity. Meanwhile, the calamity claimed the lives of a classmate who tried to flee town and the life of a brother to a classmate. When the class finally goes on their trip to the mountains, they take a group photo before entering a classic lodge that was once meant for business. They all are given separate rooms. The four of them gathered again after Mochizuki fixed the tape to finish listening to it. At the end of the tape, 15 years old Matsunaga recorded how he mistakenly killed the extra student in their midst and stopped the calamity. He strictly warned the future class 3 that the only way to stop the calamity was to send the dead back to death. During dinner, Akazawa blames the start of the calamity on Mei, explaining if she had just remained the non-existent one they would be safe, also asking Mei to apologize. Mei doesn't think apologizing would change anything so she does. Bang! Another asthmatic student was in a bad shape. Coincidentally their hotel mistress hasn't fixed the coverage issues to call 911 so Mr. Chibiki rushes him to the hospital. Mei invites Sakaki to her room where she reveals her backstory and the ability of her left eye to see the color of death in dead people and in very sick people. Sakaki tries to get her to tell him who the extra person was. Mei reluctantly attempts to say the person when Teshigawara barges into the room frightened because he had taken the life of a friend, Kazami thinking he was the extra student. The three of them decide to go outside to check for Kazami's body. Sakaki strays away to peep into the dining hall, only to see it was on fire with the manager's husband engulfed in flames. He informs Teshigawara and Mei quickly. However, a scream breaks loose in the mansion. They rush over to see but instead find bloodstains everywhere. Mochizuki tells them Komatsu was walking around with a face full of anger and he told him about the tape. Sakaki's face gets ugly. If anyone knew about the tape containing how to end the calamity, which was to send the dead back to death, there was no way to distinguish the extra student from the remaining ones. Everyone would become a suspect. He splits the group and everyone searches for Komatsu. Teshigawara and Mochizuki run into the hotel mistress drenched in blood and holding a butcher knife. She attacks them but they escape with Teshigawara hurting himself on his leg. Meanwhile, Sakaki and the others run into Sagita, 
Having listened to the tape Sujiyura tries to impale Mei but Mei is protected by Sakaki. However Sujiyura broadcasts the tape across the hotel. She believes Mei is the extra student. Due to Mei being different from the Misaki she knew in elementary school ordering everyone to kill Mei. After an explosion from the dining hall kills another student, Sujiyura injures Sakaki and comes after Mei, but is strangled to death when she gets caught in some wires. As Akazawa comes onto the scene, killing intense surfaces as she believes may kill Takako, Mei runs off, leaving Sakaki behind. More students die trying to escape from the hotel. Mr. Chibiki arrives to save Teshigawara and Mochizuki from the killer hotel mistress. Meanwhile, Sakaki comes across Kazami, who had been randomly killing students in order to find the extra student. He openly states he thinks Sakaki was the extra student so he starts attacking Sakaki and manages to hit Sakaki to the ground. In the attempt to impale Sakaki, Akazawa literally knocks him out dead. Mr. Chibiki stops Akazawa from further committing any heinous thing. She yells out her frustration and runs away. Sakiki goes in search of Mei. The entire mansion is in flames. He sees Mei about to get into a final battle with Akazawa so he rushes in to help but he is pushed away and the building continues to collapse, attempting to kill Mei. Again Akazawa is hit by shattered glass caused by a lightning strike as she passes away. She mentions to Sakaki how they had met a year and a half ago. Later on, Sakaki finds Mei. He learns that the extra one is none other than M.S. Mikami, rather, and Reiko who died a year and a half ago, although he didn't want to believe it. Mei's left eye could see the color of death, and she made no mistake in distinguishing M.S. Mikami as the extra one, realizing the memories he had forgotten. Sakaki reluctantly kills Reiko himself, ending the calamity, though he passes out from relapse. After Sakaki and Mei reflect on the memories they may soon forget, they and the other students record a new message for those who may face calamity in the future. As Teshigawara and Mochizuki hide the message, the last lines of the message are heard, that's how to stop the calamity. How you interpret this is up to you. Just carefully consider your actions, think it through, and discuss it with your friends, so you'll have no regrets.